Welcome to another Q&A episode here on OTRS Central. Thanks to those of you that tweeted your questions to at OTRS Central on Twitter. Easy for me to say. Let's try that again, at OTRS Central on Twitter, both your wrestling and some non-wrestling related questions. Let's go ahead and get these questions answered. Dementor Jeremy asks, do you think the only reason Seth inherited the pedigree is because God can never have a son to pass it down to? Bam! On the nose! Bingo! It's exactly what the fuck it is. Man. Is he going to do pass it down to the daughters? Who knows? Maybe someday. However, you know, we deep down, he wants a son, and he can't make a son. He might be God, but unfortunately, he was not blessed with the right type of chromosomes in his seed in order to impregnate Stephanie with a son. It's like that crap a while back where he was going up and consoling the kid that was crying. We all know what the real deal was. He tried to sit there and bribe the kid with free tickets and backstage passes in order to try and steal him away from his parents. He's trying to adopt us, and if you can't make one, you got to take one, I guess. Uh, that's got to be the only reason I could think of. Uh, Blood Diamond 216. What do you think about the This Is Awesome chants happening at literally every single show now? Oh, I've talked about this before. It absolutely peeves the fuck out of me. I think it's stupid. I think it's ridiculous. And it diminishes when something actually is awesome. You know, and it kind of... There's many reasons I just don't like it. I don't even know that this should really be a chant at all, period. Because it kind of takes away from what is going on. You know, the whole... Part of the purpose is to determine who wins or loses based off of what happens within the story, what happens within the story of the match. Then we're talking about this is awesome. Then we're kind of just emphasizing the fact that this is fake. Same. Mr. Scoobs, when was the turning point that WWE started producing bad shows? Was it after WWE bought out WCW and ECW? No, I don't think so. I think there was still some good WWE programming in the years following uh, WCW and ECW going away in 2001. When I think it started to get really bad was, to me, 2006, 2007. Um, that's when it started to turn. I think in a lot of ways when really started to get bad was you had the Benoit thing, then the company flipped to the PG, almost G type of rating. Stephanie's power increased in terms of the creative control of the company. Uh, some of the changes that were put in place from a creative standpoint. You know, we could blame Vince McMahon all the time because ultimately at the end of the day, he's the HNIC of all that we see when it comes to the WWE. However, you know, if the ideas that he's presented are crap, then it doesn't matter what he's really vetting. If he's vetting nothing but crap, then eventually you're just going to get crap. I mean, surely not having direct competition in your profession doesn't help matters, but it's by far not the only thing, not even the biggest thing. I really think 2006, 2007 is when the problem started to come because they found their fortunate four in Cena, Orton, Batista, and Edge. They kind of pushed those guys. Some of the other older guys were starting to go by the wayside a little bit. And then over the next couple of years, they really failed to create new stars. Chairman 015, should we be concerned with Rusev's character going forward after losing a one-sided feud with Cena? Yes. Yes, I'd be surprised if you weren't concerned about that character going forward. Dick Lonious Games, what other networks could have promoted TNA better than Destination America is? Uh, I, I still wish that TNA would have been able to end up with WGN. Um, I mean, they would have had a lot more access in terms of home being on WGN America, the Superstation. Uh, I think GN would have promoted the product better, would have been a better form and platform for them. Uh, that's the one that I still kind of wish would have happened. El Mutante Lava. Can you see an NXT versus Authority storyline where Triple H aligns himself with the NXT grads? It can create many opponents for Rollins. Now, obviously, if you're going to do some type of NXT type of invasion angle, um, Triple H would have to be the guy spearheading that. Unfortunately, in order for that to work, that would require Vince McMahon to be on television full-time for the WWE standpoint, unless you're going to do a split between Triple H and Stephanie, which I don't envision, and I don't think Vince is going to do anything full-time on television. Uh, so I'm not sure if it would really work. Um, it could create some new opponents for Seth Rollins, perhaps. But you also got to be careful, too, because you don't want your NXT roster blowing through your main roster. Um, but you also don't want your main roster blowing through your NXT roster. It's not beneficial for anybody involved, frankly. 
All right, let's see here. Larakin underscore. Do you see any talents currently on NXT as potential WrestleMania main eventers? Um, at this particular moment, perhaps the guy I point to the most would be Kevin Owens. It's hard to say because I really don't see anybody else at this point, but I would have never envisioned Daniel Bryan or Seth Rollins being WrestleMania main event type guys either. You know, so sometimes we think we know, but we really don't know. And sometimes it's all a matter of timing and opportunity and how things play out. Uh, Kitty's on crack. Who choked worse, the Clippers or the Hawks? Oh, the Clippers. They were up 3-1 in a series. The Hawks, reality was eventually going to catch up with them. They lacked size in the front court. Uh, Kyle Korver lost his shot and doesn't have the ability to create a shot for himself or create shots for others. Uh, and frankly, the Cavs are a much better team without Kevin Love than they are with Kevin Love. And I don't know how anybody could dispute that or deny that at this particular point in time. So I don't know that the Hawks choked because, after all, they were facing the number two seed in the Cavs. And I just think the Cavs were a superior team. Uh, but the Clippers, I mean, this they had the Rockets down 3-1. 3-1. Yeah, that's a horrible choke, especially when you factor in that Game 6 choke. Oh, my God. And who do you think should coach the Pelicans and the Bulls if Tibbs is gone and not available? Um, I'm not sure about the Bulls. I haven't given that a ton of thought yet. Uh, in terms of the Pelicans, it would be interesting if Calipari did, but I don't really know about them either at this point. Uh, you know, Maybe one of those teams should be inquiring about Scott Brooks. Just throwing that out there. They call me YDG. Do you think SummerSlam will ever get an outside venue? Uh... At some point in time, yes. I do think one thing that is a little bit concerning about doing it is what we saw at WrestleMania 31 is that if you do it on the West Coast and it's earlier in the day, then you run into the problems with some of these some of these entrances that are you know strongly based off of working with a lack of lighting. When it's sunny out, the entrance just doesn't work the same. You know, and that, and that's part of the show. That's part of the presentation. Uh, at some point in time, yes, I hope they most certainly do SummerSlam at an outside venue. Um, you know, we'll see if they do or not. And who do you got for the NBA Finals? Cavs or Warriors or Rockets? Oh, I'll take the Warriors. I'm assuming they'll handle business in Game 5 and knock the Rockets out. And I just think they uh, play their style better than the Cavs play that style. So I would take the Warriors probably in five games in the Finals. Mr. CM Punk, 434. Since the WWE has no plans for both Bray Wyatt and Randy Orton, why not put them together in a program? Right? Why not? It's logical to me. Be a good time to start it up now on your road to SummerSlam. I mean, why have Bray Wyatt go over Ryback just to not have him featured on Elimination Chamber at all? But Ryback's in the IC title Elimination Chamber match, I guess. Uh, and then when will they finally end the whole authority thing? And which babyface would be the choice to put him away forever? Uh, I hope sooner rather than later. I don't really see where that authority angle has been all that incredibly productive, in part, I think, because of the involvement of Stephanie McMahon and what Stephanie McMahon does as an on-screen character, and more so how she's not her dad in many ways, and I might even talk about this in a future video. Um, you know, honestly, you could do Seth Rollins if you had him do a babyface turn, lead up to a big match between him and Triple H, which is something that should happen at some point in time. Uh, Carrot Sucka. Current best and worst diva to take a stink face from. For me, the best is Naomi or Natalia or Bailey, and the worst would be Summer Rae. Um, uh, let's see here. Best, probably Naomi, yes. Uh, worst would probably be Rosa. I don't want to know what's been there. I would also throw maybe Layla into that best category as well. And do you find Tamina's new thicker appearance hot, and do you think Bailey is sexy? Her S reminds me of Molly Holly's. I think Bailey has a cute factor to her. I don't know if she's got like a hubba hubba wham bam thank you ma'am bow plow uh, type of hotness or sexiness to her yet, but she has a cuteness factor to her. I'll give her that for sure. Uh, Tamina's new thicker appearance hot. And I haven't really been huge on Tamina, so not necessarily. Edsel 4. Will we see Samoa Joe go to the main roster by the Royal Rumble? Um, 
it would be a good place to have him maybe debut and enter him into a program heading into WrestleMania. I'm not sure. You know, he might just be a guy that sticks at NXT for the time being. Uh, we'll, we'll see what they do. And also, what do you think of him keeping his name? I love it. I'm glad they're allowing him to keep his name at least at the NXT level. You know, why bring the guy in just to change his name? I understand why WWE's done that over the years from an exclusivity standpoint in terms of intellectual, intellectual excuse me, property rights to those names. Uh, but, you know, sometimes those guys are bringing a fan base with them. Why sit there and mix it up? <clears throat> why sit there and try to uh, fix it if it's not broken? I love the fact that they're allowing Samoa Joe to keep his name. Just let him be Samoa Joe. You know, and I found it funny when somebody like Jay or Ro Jim Ross was talking about why he's amused by so many fans so worried about Joe's uh, contractual situation. Well, it's part of the thing is people are caught off guard about the fact that he's keeping the Samoa Joe name. You know, that's why there's interest there. Because so many of these guys that come in like Pac is Neville. You know, El Generico is Sami Zayn. Kevin Steen is now Kevin Owens. And, you know... Daniel Bryan was once Bryan Danielson. You know, there's a little bit of an appeal there for a guy like, let's say, a CM Punk that worked for years in the independent scene under the name CM Punk, and then he gets to the big show, and he's still CM Punk. So I'm glad they let him do it, and I think they should do it more, honestly. You know, you're so worried about intellectual property rights and, you know, having creative control over things like names and merchandising and licensing rights over those names. How about you just do a better job of making the guy stars and you still make a lot of fucking money? Son Goshaku closes this out by asking first, if WWE books Seth versus Brock at SummerSlam for the world title, what do you think is the best finish? Um, Brock going over is not it. Rollins going over is not it. I really honestly think that either uh, Ambrose or Reigns has to cash in at this point, based off the way things are set up, they have to cash in on Seth and win the title that way. We need a new champion at SummerSlam, and I don't think it should be either Seth or Brock. Um, you could say Ambrose would be the ultimate get-back and <clears throat> screw-over of Rollins. You could also use that as a potential device for Reigns to fully pull off a heel turn and maybe flip Seth Rollins' babyface. Um, I might lean towards more Reigns cashing in and winning it that way, but WWE has to understand if they have him win the money in the bank, then they have to go heel with him. I don't necessarily fully agree that Reigns needs to go heel. I don't know that the timing and the situation and the circumstance is right and it's called for, but if you're going to do it, you can do it, and you could do it really big. You know, I think it either has to be Ambrose or Reigns that walks out of SummerSlam the champion. And how would you feel if WWE booked Kevin Owens to be the one to beat the one in 22-1? and Um... So you're basically saying it would have to be him versus Brock Lesnar. Hmm. Feud with Brock Lesnar? Sure. Beating Brock Lesnar? I don't know just yet. I don't know about that just yet. Um, but anyways, thanks to you guys that submitted your questions for this q and I'll do another one here in a couple of days, so just stay tuned on Twitter. I'll let you know when the next one's coming out. Make sure you check out my Elimination Chamber preview video coming up soon on this channel as well. Okie dokie, goodbye.